Good morning, my crafty friends. This is Sherry. I am here because it's Faith Share Sunday. For the first two Sundays in February, uh, Granny Martha Hamilton and I, from Granny Martha's house, we are doing a Faith Share collab. It is what we're doing is we want you to share something happy, something something that's makes you happy something if your faith makes you happy it, whatever you want to share with us I have an amazing story that I want to share that happened to me in 2015 I love to go to scrapbooking retreats and on September 26 of 2015 I was a at a scrapbooking retreat. It is just what's amazing. It's only three miles from my house. It's a place called Amigo Center. It is a wonderful, wonderful place to go and it is just beautiful there. And everybody is just so friendly. And I, I, I had been going there for several years. And on this particular day, it was the biggest retreat they had ever had. There was like 83 to 88 I can't remember there was over 80 of us there and it like I said it was the biggest retreat that they ever had and um Cheryl she is an outdoors person and she works for the Amigo and she would um start a campfire in the evening for us and um cook popcorn over the campfire and we just reminisce and just have a good time for a while just to get a go out and get some fresh air and just have fun and but this particular day we were all inside waiting for Cheryl to come and get us and um she uh came in around just before we were supposed to go out and told us ladies you have to come out and see this rainbow and we're thinking rainbow why is there a rainbow? It's not raining. It was overcast, but it was not raining. So all of us, we get up and we walk out of the, the retreat center and go outside. And sure enough, we look up in the sky and there is this beautiful rainbow. And I, to this day, don't know exactly what happened, but I had this feeling of just go through my body. I don't know how to explain it. It was like, oh, it was just a wonderful feeling. And I, and as I was standing there and I was looking up in the sky at this rainbow, a second rainbow started to form. And I'm thinking, what is going on? You know, where are these rainbows coming from? And there's like a little hill off to the side off behind me so I go and I, I'm standing on this hill and this feeling was there it I wasn't with you know all of us were out there but I just kind of froze in my when I got up there and just stared at the sky and this feeling was going through my body and ladies I really can't describe what I was feeling but it was a feeling of a wonderful feeling and earlier that day, um, the friend that I was there with was saying, oh, she hopes she gets to come back to the December retreat because um, she just loved it there. And she had quite a distance. She has a four-hour drive to get there. And um, she was hurting a little bit from finances and stuff. And I had found this shiny penny around four o'clock. I had been outside and I found this shiny penny on the ground and I brought it inside and I put it in a little dish and I says, here, Debbie, this is for you. We're going to start a change jar for you to see if we can raise enough money to bring you back in December. Well, after this rainbow and we all go started going back inside, um, I went and I picked up this jar. And I thought, I'm just going to go around. And I was collecting change, you know, just going around and, you know, telling everybody and talking with people. And they were giving me pennies and nickels and dimes. And some were giving me a dollar, you know, for Debbie to come back. Because we all love Debbie. She was just a sweetheart. So anyway, 
I get to this one table and like I said, there was 80, over 80 of us there and you don't know everybody, of course. And I get to this one table with a group of ladies. There was like six, six or eight. I can't remember. But anyway, this lady was really nasty with me and she just says, why don't you get a life? Why don't you get a job? And I'm thinking, it's okay. You know, I says, you don't have to have the fun with us. And she says, well, while you're out collecting that, my husband is home sick and he has been needing a kidney for several years now and we are having a hard time. And I don't know what made me say this, but I, I looked at her and I says, well, if I'm a match, I'll give him a kidney of mine. And she looked at me with this disgusting look on her face. And I mean, I was just, that feeling was still in my body, you guys. And I was just standing there and I says, well, I mean it. If I'm a match, I'll give him a kidney. And I don't know why. I hate needles. I'm just not the type of person that, you know, would want any type of surgery. But I was serious, you guys. I really meant what I said. And Something inside of me was saying, you got to help this guy. you got to help him. Well, I left my name and address and phone number with this lady. And I went on about my fun and went back to my table and was just having a good time. And I learned that she had gone up to the, the lady in charge of Amigo. And um, Mandy had told her, you know, she says, what kind of kook is this lady? She just said she would donate a kidney to my husband. And Mandy looked at my name there and she saw it was me. And she says, oh my, if Sherry said that, Sherry meant what she said. And I did really mean what I said. Well, time went on. We went through the weekend. We, the lady and I never spoke. She had my name. She had my phone number. And Monday came around and about nine o'clock at night, my phone rings and it was her. And she had went home and told her husband about what I had said. And he said the same thing. <laughs> he says, what kind of kooky people are at this place? Why would somebody want to give me their kidney, you know, a stranger? And, um, and, and she asked me if I really meant what I said. And ladies, I did. I really meant what I said. I just feel like somehow that day, after all the things I had been through over the past years, I it just I won't go into that, but I had a really rough life for, for so many years. I was 59 at the time of this, in 2015, and the gentleman that needed the kidney, he was 69. So the odds were really against us, because I was 59 and he was 69, and for us to be even be a match, and for him or I to even be healthy enough, to give this kidney, we, it was just like, will it ever happen? Well, I went on about, we talked, I talked with this lady and, um, then I called the next day to up to the Lutheran hospital in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I talked to somebody for quite a while. And she says, you know, I am going to send you this kit. Normally, we just don't, we really need more. But she says, I'm going to send you a kit. So a couple days later, I get this kit in the mail to go to a lab somewhere and have my blood drawn. And it would go back and be checked. And a week after that, I found out I was a perfect match for him. His name was Gary. And I called her, I called Gloria. Gloria was the one at the the amigo and I called her up and I says Gloria I'm a match I'm a perfect match we and so for the next six months I went through a whole bunch of tests Gary had to go through some things and stuff too but I had to go through lots of testing and um right up until the day a few days before this God was still testing us because I found out that one of my kidneys was um, a little weak and I might not be able to donate after all the testing I had gone through and being a match and all this, I was just devastated. I thought, oh man, you know, why? You know, after all this, we had our hopes up and I had met, you know, we had gotten together a few times during that six months and I began 
became a sister to Gary, and Gary became a sister to me. Gloria and I became very close. We didn't know each other, but we just knew this was meant to be. So I had my test done, and the my um, kidney doctor, that was the one that takes my kidney, he's the one that didn't want to take it at first and, until this test was done. And he found out that I was able to do it. So six months to the day, which was January 26, 2016, Gary and I, I gave him a kidney. I was there and I mean, it was such a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. I donated my kidney and we were just so happy and just, you know, I remember just, just having this feeling that, you know, I'm helping, you know, I just can't believe that I can do this and to a stranger, you know, who ended up not being a stranger by that time because we got to know each other during that six months and um, I loved him and I loved Gloria and it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing that over a rainbow and and there's so much more to this story that I can't even begin to express how God had to be a big part of this because Gloria wasn't supposed to even be at this this retreat. Her husband was supposed to be having surgery to take veins from his leg up into his arm for the for him to have more um oh, the dialysis done and he canceled that while she was at work she was a teacher and she was at work and he canceled that appointment so she could come to this retreat and as she was I found out as she was walking into this retreat she was telling her two friends that she was with she says you know I have a feeling Gary's gonna get a kidney soon who would have thought you know she was telling her friends that and I was there and it's just a you know 24 hours later I'm offering a kidney to this guy that I didn't even know but it was just it's just unbelievable and all the things that we went through and everything um to be a perfect match was awesome you know to be able to to be able to give him my kidney and I just to this day I'm just so so thankful that God was with us in that I was able to give Gary my kidney unfortunately there is some sad news here too um a little bit but Gary lived for a whole year a little over a year after that and his heart failed on March 4th of 2017 and he had he started having a lot of issues and we lost him and but I was there in the room with his family with me because I was part of that family after I donated that kidney he was my brother he was maybe not by you know a mom and a dad together but he was my brother and one of the last things he did, and I'll never forget this, is he was trying to take off his things, and he kept pointing his finger up and to up. You know, you can't tell me that God wasn't there telling us he's ready, and he's and, and God was waiting for him and had other plans, but I was able to give him my kidney and for a year I got to be part of his life and do so much with them and it was it was a blessing but I say you know God God is really good I mean he I kept asking God for so many years you gotta show me a sign here you know because I just I'm having a hard time I there's got to be some kind of sign and on that day I got my sign and God has been a big big part of my life since that moment and you guys it is a miracle and I have gone through lots of ups and downs but God is a big part of my life and I hope this 
just telling you my story that there is hope out there. Please don't give up because God is, God is good. He is there and he is looking out after us and he listens. So don't give up. It, it may it may have taken me almost 59 years it did take me 59 years of trying to figure out why do I go through all the stuff I did but I've been rambling on too long now but you guys just don't give up okay I love you and have a blessed day